Hello, 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 hello. I'm going to do the solution with you of the shuttle problem. I have a shuttle and the mass of the shuttle, including the fuel that can be used to burn the rockets, the whole thing is 100,000 kilograms. I call that the initial mass. It includes everything. And the shuttle is in a circular orbit around the Earth. I want to increase the speed of the shuttle in the same direction that it's flying. So it moves in this direction. I want to increase that speed from 8.0 kilometers per second to 8.5 kilometers per second. The exhaust gas speed coming out of the rocket relative to the rocket is 2.5 kilometers per second. I call that U. And the question now is to make this change in speed, what is the total mass of the fuel that has been spewed out? I call that mass fuel. In lecture 17 I discuss what we call the rocket equation. It's rather classic. You may want to go over that. You will learn some physics if you do that. So, the final speed of our rocket, which is eight and a half kilometers per second, of our shuttle, which is eight and a half kilometers per second, minus the initial speed, which was 8.0 kilometers per second, is minus this u times the natural logarithm of the ratio of the final mass of the shuttle divided by the initial mass of the shuttle. The initial mass that included the fuel is 10 to the fifth kilogram. The final mass does not include the fuel. If you want a little bit of the minus sign, you can flip this over, then you get the initial mass divided by the final mass, and then you have here plus u. So the final mass after the rocket burn of the shuttle is 10 to the fifth minus the mass of the fuel that has been spewed out. So, simple algebra. This difference is half a kilometer per second. U is two and a half kilometers per second. That ratio is 0 0.20. And the rest is trivial. So the total mass of the fuel that has been thrown out is 1.8 times 10 to the 4 kilograms. So after the burn, the mass of the shuttle went down to about 8.2 times 10 to the 4 kilograms. Not so difficult, wasn't it? But it's nice to know that the amount of fuel that is needed to make this change is by no means trivial. Okay. Take care, have a nice day. And we will be friends in the show. So before the burn, the shuttle is in a circular orbit around the Earth. After the burn, the orbit will become elliptical. If you want to learn more about this, I suggest you watch my lecture number 22 of 801. I discuss there in great detail Keplerian orbits, and I include the romance between Peter and Mary who are in the exact same circular orbit around the Earth, but not in the same satellite. And then Peter wants to send a ham sandwich to Mary. Very dramatic. <laughs> okay, so watch that lecture.